does the Bible say about climate change? All right, let's see it. First and foremost, the Bible speaks in the book of Romans about a generation that was going to spend more time worshiping the created things than the creator. And I think that that generation is on the earth today. No, Romans 1, 18 through 32 pretty clearly is speaking about the Greco-Roman world in Paul's day. All the verbs that are used in reference to the activity of this generation are either present active verbs or aorist verbs, which is kind of like a simple past. So this is indisputably a group that was around before Paul and was around during Paul. There is no argument to make that this is some kind of prophecy or prediction about a future generation. The only reason anyone would get that out of the text is if they need to read it into the text because they need to use the text to target somebody. When you start to support the rescue of endangered animals and abort fetuses, you have inverted the perspective of value. So this is a laughable false equivalence on a number of grounds. To begin, we're not even talking about climate change in this comparison. We're trying to show that priorities are mixed up, but climate change isn't one of the priorities. We've picked ideologies that this creator associates with the left, with the political other. So it's not saying people who oppose climate change or are concerned about climate change have their priorities mixed up. We're just saying leftists are opposed to climate change and leftists have their priorities mixed up. So this is just petty and naive right-wing authoritarian identity politics. You don't have to be a leftist. You don't have to support legalized abortion. You don't even have to care for endangered species in order to be concerned about the effects of climate change. And additionally, if we look in the Bible, we do not find this perspective of value that this creator is promoting. In fact, the only place where the Bible's perspective on the value of a fetus is clearly articulated is Exodus 21 verses 22 to 23, which makes perfectly clear that a fetus was worth far less than a born human. In fact, it was treated as property, the property of the husband, because if a fetus is lost when a pregnant woman is accidentally injured by men fighting, it's the husband who gets to assess the penalty, the fine. And so the Bible's perspective of value here is not the same as this creator's. When we talk about climate change in the context of our modern day, where people are worried about glaciers melting and cities being underwater and hurricanes and all of these things that are being caused, what you're hearing is a brand new form of pagan religion that is making created things more important than the God who created them. So here we see what this argument all boils down to, and that is the notion that concern for climate change constitutes idolatry. And not because there's a plausible case to make that concern for climate change actually constitutes idolatry. There's not, and this creator has not remotely approximated one, but because if you want there to be a biblical case against concern for climate change, which this creator does, you have no choice but to insist it is idolatry, because that's the only way you can say the Bible is against it. But this creator's case just falls apart. Everything is a fallacy. Romans 1 is not a prophecy about a future generation. It's a discussion of first century CE Greco-Roman society. The comparison of concern for endangered species and concern for human fetuses is not about climate change. It's just a weak rhetorical jab at the left it also does not show that the created is being put ahead of the creator because human fetuses are not the creator. Now, you may argue, well, we're created in the image of God. Great. So what about the catastrophic loss of human life that would result from cities all around the world being submerged in the ocean? What about the fact that a fetus is more likely to die in Utah because of the air pollution? What about the extra 2,500 to 8,000 premature deaths that are estimated to result from air pollution in Utah? We're not concerned with endangered species as much as we are concerned with human life. And this creator has to ignore that in order to say, look, they're putting animals ahead of humans. That's wildly false and wildly fallacious. 
Additionally, there are millions and millions of faithful believers of all kinds around the world who are profoundly concerned for the effects of climate change, not because they're worshiping the created over the creator, but precisely because they think it is an act of worship to exercise responsible stewardship over the creation because they are putting the creator first and because they believe that protecting human life is a part of that worship. Now, this creator is going to ignore that as well because this is not about climate change. This is about preaching to the choir to help them feel like their right-wing authoritarian identity politics are in alignment with God's will as expressed in the Bible, and it does not matter how weak or how fallacious or how dishonest the argument is to get them there.